Hi, this is Dr. Fass here. Now, if you've followed my channel for the last couple of years, then most likely you've seen quite a few videos of me doing car accessory installs, such as HID lights, uh, car stereo, car alarms, remote start. In those videos, I showed you the type of parts and the technique used to wire up your aftermarket parts to your vehicle. And recently, I noticed I was running low on a lot of these connectors that I commonly used and I had to order some new ones. And after getting the new parts, I thought this would be a good time for me to do a video where I can show you all the stuff I use. And these things I'm about to show you are very, very common when it comes to doing any type of car installs. So if you want to get into doing your own installs, you might want to look into stocking up on these same parts. So let's first look at the crimp connectors that I always have on hand. Here in this storage bin, this is where I normally keep all my crimp connectors. And it's very convenient because I can close this up, lock it in place, take it with me, unlock it, and this opens up. Now, if some of you are interested in buying a storage bin like this, I am not sure if you can still buy it. This is made by Rubbermaid, and I got it probably about 17, 18 years ago uh, in Canada from a store called Canadian Tire. But I've not seen this in any retail stores anymore, so you might want to check online and see if they still sell it. Now let's talk about the various parts I have in these bins. At the very top, these three right here, these are all butt connectors. You'll notice that this is yellow, this is blue, and this is red. And the different color will represent different gauge of wires this will work for. So if you look at both sides, there's an opening here. And the butt connector is used for connecting two pieces of wire together. The yellow color is good for 10 to 12 gauge wires. The blue one here is good for 14 to 16 gauge wires. The red one here is good for 16 to 22 gauge wires. In this bin we have some fuses. These are used for installing car amplifiers. Here we have some ring terminals. These are for the 10 to 12 gauge wires. These are also for the 10 to 12 gauge wires, but the ring terminal is smaller in diameter. Over here, this one is the 14 to 16 gauge ring terminal. Here we have these connectors, which I'm not sure what the name is, but I bought these a long time ago. And what they're good for is if you have several ground wires or several power wires, that you want to connect together. You just have to feed it into this end and then crimp it and the other end is closed. It's insulated but I haven't really used these too much. Over here we have some slide on or push on connectors. These are the female ones and they're used for connecting to relay terminals and I use a lot of these. Over here we have some self tapping connectors and as you can see they come in blue and also red but I don't really use these anymore because sometimes they don't make a very good connection and they fail. So I think these ones have been sitting here for 10 plus years now. I should really throw it away. At the bottom here we have some self tapping screws. So I have these long ones and also these shorter ones. The last bin here are just miscellaneous stuff that I've kept. Uh, some double sided tape here spare fuse. I even have a pin switch for alarm system. So the connectors that I was running low on were these two butt connectors, the blue and the red, and these push-on female connectors. And I got some new ones off eBay because they are cheap and sometimes they have free shipping. In this box, these are the new ones I got. Each of these bags uh, contain a hundred, so I have 300 right here of the blue butt connectors. This bag, these two right here are the blue female push-on connectors. And these two bags I have 200. And here are the red butt connectors, but if you look at them, they are not red, they are purple. I'm not sure why, but they do have the right gauge at the end, so they'll work fine. I don't think there's going to be any problems with these. 
I also picked up uh, some bullet connectors, so I have both uh, male and female ends. I won't be using these too much, but in case I have any connection where I need a quick disconnect, that's where I'll use these. Also in the box, you'll notice that I have a bunch of relays, and I do use these a lot. These are the 30 amp relays. I got 20 of these. So there are 10 in each of these box. Single pull, double throw, 12 volt automotive relays. And as for the tools I use for crimping, these are all the tools you need. Basically you have a wire stripper, a wire crimper, and wire cutter. I have done a video on how to use these tools and how to use the butt connectors so I will put a link to that video in my description below. Here is a roll of 3M double sided tape. You can get these at uh, most automotive stores. Very handy, very sticky. And they're meant for automotive use. Let's move over to my tool chest here. So here I have some pry tools. It's a must if you're going to be doing any type of stereo installs because you don't want to scratch the panels in your vehicle. So I have different sizes of uh, pry tools. Here I have some additional fuses. These are ATO fuses. Different amp rating. Over here, these are inline fuses. So if you're going to be adding any accessories to a vehicle and it requires you to bring in 12 volt from the battery, you definitely want to fuse that wire so you don't risk any electrical shorts. So let me open one up and I'll show you how these work. As you can see, it comes in this ring and what you have to do is cut this open. So when you cut this open, one end is going to connect to the battery, let's say. The other end is going to connect to the device. And over here, you install your fuse. I got these off eBay also. Here at the bench, I have a soldering iron. And this is a butane portable soldering iron. And it can come in handy if you're in a tight spot and you need to have something portable. But normally I actually take this right to the car and I just do the soldering using this soldering station. And of course to do any type of electrical work in your vehicle, get yourself a decent multimeter. I did a couple of videos on showing people how to use a multimeter so I'll also put a link in my description so if you want to click on that. And this little circuit board here is some testing I'm doing right now for a timer that I'll add to my Wemo garage door opener. That will be in a different video. Hopefully I'll have it done in a couple of weeks. With any type of installs you do, of course, at the end, you need to clean up the wiring, make sure that there are no loose wires hanging. So you're gonna need to pick up some tie wraps. They come in different lengths. So here, this one is the six inch length. This is my favorite one. It's a perfect length to get in tight spots and be able to wrap up the wires. Now one thing to note is to stay away from this brand called Vanco. I got these off eBay a couple years ago and I would say half of these will fail. What I mean is that after you bundle the wire, the locking plastic tab inside is not strong enough and it'll come undone. Another thing that you'll be using a lot of is electrical tape. Don't buy the cheap stuff because the cheap electrical tape, after a year or two in a vehicle, the tape gets hard and the glue actually starts dissolving. And next thing you know, the whole tape will start unwinding and you might have an electrical short. So I like using this 3M Scotch Super 33. It's rated for up to 221 degrees Fahrenheit or 105 degrees Celsius all the way down to negative 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 degrees Celsius. So these are very good tape. In this bag, I have heat shrink. So whenever you do any type of electrical work in your vehicle, you're going to either crimp wires together or solder and put on some heat shrink. 
So they do come in different sizes, as you can see. Going back to the crimp connectors, if you really need to get a storage bin, I picked this up at Harbor Freight. I think it was about eight or nine dollars, very inexpensive. They have separate compartments. You can open up the top here and put all your parts in here. So this video covers all the basic stuff that I think you need if you want to get into any type of installation in a vehicle. If you're going to be doing stereos or fog lights or any type of accessories you want to add. At least these are the parts that I've been using for the last 10 plus years to do all the installs that I've shown you in some of my other videos. But of course if you have other ideas feel free to leave a comment below and I hope uh, you found this video helpful. If you have any questions leave a comment below. And don't forget to click on the like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.